but you see like by 30 minutes right 12 minutes you've already lost yeah. all your advantage of your early game where um like your opponents are going to be getting a lot of levels by then right like yeah. this archon is already level 10 <clears throat> so instead of you kind of punishing him when you're level 8 and he's only like level 5 level 6 or whatever you're now you're like you let him get to the point where he's like level 10 and you're just like level 11 and you can't really do anything like that much uh, and, anymore and the supports have their ulties right mm -hmm, exactly and they're strong too now <clears throat> so the thing as a mid laner is this early like pre level 10 you're like the god on the map okay so you keep focusing on getting these runes and you keep focusing on like seeing the angles to attack the side lane and when I say attack the side lane, I don't only mean like you have to like dive them and kill them. You could also wait for the chance where they try to make an aggressive move and you can TP in and counter that aggressive move. If you like our content, please do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the notification button below so you will be notified when a new video will be released. This game, you're playing Ember, you're up against a Storm Spirit. We're gonna see what's happening. I think this is the replay that you first mentioned. So we're gonna get through this yeah. and see like where you can improve on and how you can help your team, right? So one yeah. thing to understand because you're <clears> always <throat> you're pretty much only playing with your friends, right? Yeah. Okay. So because you're playing with your friends, you got like this level of teamwork available, or like you need you just need to understand like what you can do for your team that can help them win, because that's what matters at the end of the day, right? Like you tr probably trust your teammates that they're gonna carry you at some point so at this point like as somebody who's like a little bit lower mmr you can see like what you can do to make their game easier and that's kind of like what mid is actually about right now in dota 2 dota 2 mid is not about like you just crushing your lane crushing your lane is nice and all but actually enabling your side lanes is actually where most of your efforts should go into because when you do that you will naturally be able to control the map better and you're also gonna make your teammates stronger for early game, your item builds, I, I like it. Uh, you're going for straight Wraith Ban. You got a Fairy Fire to bait your opponent out, also give you some damage. Very nice. You got the Healing Salve and a Bottle queued up because you want to get those as soon as you possibly can, especially against Storm. Sometimes uh, when you play matchups against Storm, before you can get Bottle, you can even think about getting Magic Stick because Storm does use a lot of spells in the lane. To, like for example remnant or vortex to try and like you know kill you or something and if you have a magic stick you can like bait them out and you can actually do a lot of damage to them, pretty much i see i have a question like when i block like this sometimes like like i see that sometimes the enemy creeps might be going to my tower mm -hmm. so do i try to suddenly like move forward so they don't reach my tower Yes, you want to move forward. When you have the creep wave go mid like this, right? Like you want to make sure that if your enemy creeps are too, like coming too forward to your tower, you don't want to let them go into your tower. You want to hold them right here. Because if you hold them right here, you have options, right? As an Ember Spirit, you can either use Flame Guard, run at your opponent's storm, zone them out, then go back and get the last and then the nice. Or you can just stay here and you can just last at all the creeps and the enemy storm can also miss creeps hitting up the hill. Yeah, I see. Something I've seen, they like to push in the middle right away so that they get level two and then they get to bully the other guy while last mm -hmm. sitting under the tower does that right is that only for certain heroes or it really depends on the matchup right it really depends on the matchup you can do that as well where you can shove you can shove the lane in and try to bully them in these situations i think when the wave is like up here on your hill it's a lot better that you just leave it there and you can like use your flame guard to uh, push the lane in a little bit and run at the storm and like try to force him to like run away from the creeps so you can go back and deny the creeps i see yeah so Makes shoving sense. the lane level one is also a possibility that's not a problem at all like if the lane is like maybe down the river a little bit you can do that as well or you can just like again like drag the creep away. like in losing matchups you might want to do that a little bit more like against queen of pains i see a lot of ember spirits actually do that so this game this storm does like 120 damage and that's something like you need to be careful when you use flame guard because your flame guard only absorbs 80 damage right one thing about storm versus ember matchup you have to think about like what happens with your hero to heroes do you normally um get what do you skill level like on your hero when uh, you play ember like before what happened before when i was facing a storm was i went flame guard and he popped it right with yeah he pops it right remnant. exactly so I, I i tried watching a couple of other people and what they do is like they still get flame guard but they try to dodge the first one 
like hope like they try to bait it out so i just tried it here as well um i was thinking like maybe going w but yeah uh when i i just copied what other people do right 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 no i, <laughs> I think, don't know I, if it's right no that's yeah. completely fine it, it, it's completely fine like the way that uh, you cast your spells is really dependent on what your opponent is doing. If the storm walks up, he uses static remnant, you can always pop your flame guard and run on him. Essentially, right? So the problem here I see already in the first wave is that because you can't let the wave go here and you let the storm drag the wave too, you're actually giving him the opportunity to be able to get all the assets while you can't even contest him for denying the creeps at all. The only way you're going to make him pop the static remnant is if you're actually contesting him for the denies and he has to use the remnant to like secure the last hit and harass you. Uh, so it was, yeah, I think I couldn't pull back the creeps because I stopped them too far, too near my tower. Right. That correct? So what happens is if the creep wave is here like this and then, and then um, the storm is like trying to drag the wave down, all you have to do is bring your hero more towards here or make these creeps go into your range creep and you get that deny on the range creep. If, you, if your hero is in the middle of the wave here, then these creeps will drag onto you and then they will go back onto these creeps because you'll like de-aggro. You know how to de-aggro, right? You, like, you just like yeah. eight-click your right own click. creeps. Right. So then that will bounce the lane out. The other option you can have is instead of skilling Flame Guard, you skill up Side of Fist in this situation. Uh, you pull these creeps into your ranged, you deny the ranged, and then you use Side of Fist to get the ranged creep here. I was a bit scared of pulling the creeps to my ranged here because I th I thought that maybe the tower would kill them. Right. So this is where, like, if that happens, you have an option now to, like, adjust your gameplay, right? Where if the creeps go into your tower, now you can still last it under your tower and your opponent is facing the same problem. Yeah, right? makes sense. And, and then you would have got the last hit because he can't get this creep. You, you're right beside it. You're going to deny it. You have more damage than he does. And you can get this creep because you have side of fist. Right? And this is where the thing that you talked about happens where you farm the creeps and then you push these creeps into your opponent and now you can pressure him. Yeah, I see. Makes right? sense. So Thank mid you. mid lane is a lot about like every second what's going on. You just have to adjust to that. But your main focus is always going to be on how you can deny more creeps and you, how you can take more creeps as well at the same time. So whatever skill lets you do that, that's what you should skill up. So here you skill your flame guard, but I don't see you like running in, trying to bait out remnants by trying to deny your creeps and forcing him to use remnant. That's the only time he's going to use remnant, right? To try and get a last hit. Yeah. So if, if that's not your plan and your plan is to like try to just deny creeps, then it's better to skill up side of fist so you can get the range creep and secure that while you're also denying this creep because if you get all these creeps you're gonna get level two if you deny one creep he's not gonna get level two so when the next wave comes you already have like this immense pressure available to you where you can just like click your flame guard and you can go on him or like push the next wave and force him to do something to try and stop you from like pressuring him right yeah so Understood. it's not that complicated as like you know whatever we're talking it's more like um, you just have to see, oh, okay, so this guy, he's just pulling the creeps, he just wants to farm, I'm not going to chase him, I just want to deny this creep, and how do I get the range creep? I just have to use Slide of Fist. And you just have to always make sure that, like, you can get the enemy range creep, and you can try to deny his range creep. Okay? As long as you do that, and if you keep doing that, like, every game, you're going to naturally build a huge advantage over your opponent mid laner. And this is a special this is special for like the first two three waves right because the first two three waves you're not killing your opponent nor are you gonna like like own him really really hard how you own him in the lane is by like getting more last hits and denies against it okay so against a hero like storm like i would recommend maybe 80 percent of the time skilling like flame guard is probably not the right choice because if you have slight then you can at least get the creep kill and you can also harass him a little bit but if you get flame guard and if he drops like one remnant on you you can't harass him already you're just gonna pop your shield it's gonna be pretty sad right yeah okay so let's see what ends up happening is um he pulls the wave again you don't get that last hit now you go back for this and then like every last hit is pretty much kind of getting like contested uh by him i think if he was a better player he would have like denied all those creeps uh in that situation yeah, you uh, skill up think, chain. Yeah. Okay. I just, Go ahead. 
I think that was wrong, like watching it now. Yeah. At the time, I was like, maybe I could get a lot of damage onto him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. like the matchup in these situations, getting chains is generally like really weak. Because one, uh, it costs a lot of mana, and now you're gonna scale up all three of your spells, and like later on when you use all three of your spells, your mana pool is gonna be like done, right? Like you're gonna, you're just gonna use too much mana. Most of the time, I watch Ember Spirits play. Uh, they always just go like zero to four, or like they'll go two levels inside of this, and then they'll get like three levels in Flame Guard, and then they'll scale up chains. Yeah, and I think. Slight of Fist is really good here because, as you mentioned, I could dodge remnants with it, right? Like when I have Flame Guard on. Definitely, so you can dodge remnants it, with it. Yeah, it was really bad for me, like scaling that chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, your Slight of Fist is the tool that lets you get lassets, right? Like early game, your most important thing, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this because this is like actually the most important point is the first two waves is all about getting lassets and denies. Right? If you're harassing your opponent, the reason why you're harassing your opponent is to push him off the creep wave so you can get the denies and lasts. I see ya. Okay? So you don't want to like use your resources uh, just to give away all those lasts and denies just to keep your opponent low. That, that doesn't make any sense for like the first two, three waves. Because you need that gold in order to get your bottle, to get your magic wand, to get those boots and stuff. You're harassing them so they cannot contest you for the lasts. Got it? Yeah, that makes right. a lot of sense. Thank you. Great. So here you're just kind of shoving the lane in, and he's just going to use his remnant if he needs to, just to like get all these lassets. And you go back to the wave, you block. I really like this. Then you go back to block it, then you go pull it to the ranged. And this is really good that you run at him. But when you run at him like this, try not to um, A click him, okay? Like when you. Okay, so you see right here, you're kind of running at him, right? You're running at him, yeah. but don't attack him. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, if you a click, behind. yeah, just move <laughs> move forward, and then once you get beside him, then click the attack button on him if you want to attack him. Do you know why this is? What happens yeah. when you? So that the creeps don't chase me. Exactly. And if the creeps don't chase you and you run forward like this, what's gonna happen is the storm thinks you're gonna come after him. You're gonna attack him, and he's gonna run away or he's gonna fight you back. If he fights you back, now you have a choice what to do, right? Yeah. Like you can attack him. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, right now the creeps are chasing me. I have to go back myself. Exactly. And on top of that, what you did here, what I thought was amazing, was you pulled the creeps. You pulled it onto the ranged. You should let this ranged creep get denied. Right. So what, what what's happening is you run at him. You're probably gonna make this guy run away, and then you go back and you just right click this ranged creep and you deny it. And that's how you build an advantage in your lane. This is like what you have to actually remember a lot for the first two to three waves especially. Because once you build up that advantage, once you get that level advantage because you deny more creeps, now you can use that to attack your opponent and be very aggressive on them. Alright, so yeah. here, again, you did a good play, but because you A-clicked them from <clears throat> back here, these creeps are following you. Now this creep does not go below 50%. To like deny it. So if you didn't hit him, you would run here. The storm runs away. Now this creep will be like at maybe 100 HP. You go back, boom, right click, denied. The storm is super sad, and now you clear up the creep wave, and you're gonna get like more XP than them, than him. Yeah, my bad. No, it's okay. Again, this is all about a learn, like learning, right? What to do. Um, a lot of yeah. people don't really understand like the value of creeps in the early levels and what 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 it actually does, like. How important it is to deny creeps and get lassets. And by killing off your range creep, it'll also make uh, their creep run more towards like your tower area here. So you have like more room to like, actually chase down your opponent. So now you scale up slight. Um, so ideally in this situation, like you have level one slight and level two flame guard. Because when you have level two flame guard, it's really hard for him to actually pop your shield. So this does 40 plus uh, 175, it's not enough to pop your 220 shield. Yeah, uh, I effed up a bit with these yeah. chain. It's okay. Denied. So he, this, is, this is not bad, but I obviously, like in these situations, the best thing is like, you keep pulling these creeps to your range, you deny it. Uh, if he pulls the creeps to this range, you use Slide of Fist to get that creep, and then 
normally what happens in your bracket is the guy will not aggro the creeps to your range so um you will be able to deny this and then you'll bring back the creep wave up here hold it here like farm here and then if the enemy goes out of position you click flame guard and you just chase him down yeah i see uh just a question uh, sure. when i try i don't know if it's because i lack practice or but when i try to slide the fist to last hit creeps it's a bit hard like mm -hmm. the damage is a bit low on creeps. yeah it is low um but you need to like really calculate that you just got to get more practice with it right like you yeah. need to be able to do it like last second as long as the enemy doesn't deny the creep it's fine if they're trying to like contest to deny the creep as long as like even your creeps get the last hit it's okay you just want that xp right your goal yeah. is to deny this range creep your goal is to deny your range creep right so you can yeah. deny this range creep and then you can run to that range creep I i'm saying this like in situations where the opponent tries to change trade range creeps right where you can yeah, stop yeah. him but i think in most situations they're not going to do that because they're not going to be smart enough to do that uh it makes makes more sense now yeah right so i was thinking like if i was fighting with the opponent denying my creep but you mentioned that it's not it's because he's also trying to get my range creep right right exactly yeah okay thank you okay. thanks for clearing it up no problem so here like you're doing this the uh, the thing i'm talking about all you have to do is kill this and then you focus on going to kill this right boom perfect and then you get the you go for the range but you see, like you kind of, all you had to do was like right click it one time and then you slide on it, right? And you would have yeah. got it. <laughs> but you kind of like waited too long. And now, yeah. And it's not even bad. Look how much damage the, like your slide actually does to it. It's like, um, 100 damage? Yeah. I think I got faked out. I'm not sure. By the storm. I'm not sure. Or I just made a mistake. Yeah, you just have to right click it, right? You just gotta get more used to doing that. But it's fine. But here, because you're on the hill, you're able to run down, chase them out. And this is exactly what you want to do, right? Like, this, what you did was perfect. That was actually amazing, right? When the wave is on your hill, you, you click your flame guard, you chase him down, you cast some spells on him, and then he's just gonna be super sad. He's gonna get kicked out of the lane, and then you go back and you deny everything. Perfect. But this is what you kind of want to do, like, obviously from wave one Number already. One. Right? Where like you're microing the creeps to kill your ranged, get their ranged, and then like build up that advantage. In this situation, there's gonna be games where you're gonna be level four and your opponent's only gonna be level three and a half, and you're gonna bully the shit out of him all the time. Let's go back a little bit. This is this is where things are starting the game is gonna start changing, right? Like laning stage, in my opinion, like after four minutes or before four minutes is when it gets really chaotic. Okay, so when you play mid heroes with bottle like ember and you're playing against another mid hero who also has a bottle what do you normally do when it comes to the four minute rune um right before the four minute rune, i try pushing the wave in right I, i'm not sure if that's right that's but... that's fine that's perfectly fine um so let's see what you do here so it's 350 and the wave is here right and you just kind of focus on the creeps okay so Sometimes you don't need to all the way push in the wave, you just have to see the angle that the opponent is in, okay? So if, let's say, your wave is here at 4 minutes, or, or, or 350, the wave is here, all you have to do is be down the river and kind of like mimic where your opponent is going to go. So that you know you're going to get there faster. So because you're right now in the river, and the storm is on this hill, you know that you're going to beat them to this rune, and you're going to beat them to this rune. Right? Yeah. So you don't actually have to shut the lane in. At all. You just have to like be ready to angle for the rune. The four minute rune, especially when you have a bottle, refilling this bottle is the most important thing. Nothing else matters. Okay? So no creeps matter, no denies matter at this point. Your most important thing is getting the bottle, getting the rune. Because a rune is like an item. Okay? So if you get an arcane rune, you get DD, you get region, whatever. It's like it, it, this is what's going to help you either dominate your mid lane or allow you to uh, roam to another lane later. Okay, so you, you, this is something, I, I'm sure you watched my other videos or something, maybe on mid lane or something. I've been uh, talking to some, like, you know, um, other students, and I speak about this a lot, and this is very important, that you value this runes, like, throughout the entire game. Like, a hero like Ember, because you play it all the time, and this is your hero for the mid lane, your rune is everything for this hero. 
okay so implement that into your mind like or like imprint that into your mind that every nothing matters apart from your runes all the time would you recommend also asking like a support to try to help me in right. most cases or? okay so um what happens is what that was the next point i was going to get to so four minute rune what you can do is you can always ask your offlaner support to actually come to the uh, uh the rune that they're at so they can cover the rune for you right so that way uh when you're playing mid on dire you can check top your offlaner will check bottom for your offlane support sorry will check bottom for you and then now you can guarantee the rune no matter what okay yeah because um and if you're radiant then your offlane support will be top right he's gonna check this rune and then you're gonna go and check bottom rune. then as a radiant hero you can run back to top and t pick up that rune that your support will cover for you yeah makes sense okay uh, cause, yeah when i watch like your games or like higher people higher you know pro games like i see that they fight over their runes a lot but oh yeah it doesn't happen in my mmr okay. exactly what happens in high mmr games is runes are literally everything people would die for runes. supports would die for runes to protect it and give it to their mid laner because when you get the rune now you have an option you, you, you build up another option for yourself, plus refill your own bottle, right? You can either stay mid, you can dominate the mid laner, or you can TP to a silent, you can kill the side laners, or where your rune was, you can actually roam to the other lane and kill them. Normally, 4-minute rune is not your roaming rune. 6-minute rune and on from there are considered your roaming runes. Okay? So 4-minute rune is more like refill your bottle, uh, so you have it full and then you just use that to like keep building on your advantage and get a little bit more XP And maybe you can yeah. and then you can like try to think about like how you want to use your rune <laughs> whether it is to um, Farm with it or keep it for the six minute rune fight and then take that six minute rune and then roam with it Whatever it may be you just like use it as you go. Okay Okay, copy right so here you go top you get the rune really good and then you go back middle, you use your third skill, you try to go on this um, storm here, just do some damage, you shove the lane out, it's good. So here, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't have minded, I wouldn't mind, like, if you actually, like, clicked your arcane rune to, like, shove the lane out or something. But, um, because you're so close to level 6, it's actually quite nice that you hold on to it. Because as soon as you get level 6, you, you can, like, either go dominate this guy or, or something like that. Um... Why'd you click your rune here, actually? Any uh, particular reason? I I don't remember. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. No problem. Um, so as a mid laner, sometimes if you're dominating, like this game, I think you're dominating in in some ways, right? The storm still has farm, but you're really strong, and I think you can tell that you're really strong. Uh, what I would do is, yeah, I get the four minute rune, great. Um, I go mid, I push out the lane. What you can do in this position is you can like kind of angle yourself on the left side here, like like hold the wave here angle yourself here and you can go here and snag your five minute bounty rune. so what happens is you need to think that mid laners five minute bounty rune they always try to go and like take the rune to refill their bottle right i'm sure as an ember you've gone here and refilled this bottle <clears throat> yeah yeah with this rune so you need to think like what they want to do as a mid laner what they need and you try to like take that away from them because when you take that away from them it's like you're giving yourself some tempo and you're also like removing removing that tempo from them too so it's like a win-win situation for you like no matter what right yeah it's a huge pain when i lose the the bottle when i need it the bounty rune right <laughs> right 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 it's, it's it's a huge pain and that's what you need to do to them so you're going to dominate mid using whatever we talked about and then like here if i go back a little bit okay so here i thought i thought it was amazing that you have the you're right here okay and you you were walking here. I thought you were gonna go get the rune. I, I was gonna be like, wow, you're amazing. Yeah, like you're already thinking about that stuff. But uh, obviously, like maybe it was just like a coincidence, right? You just went to eat your tango or something. So yeah. here, what I would do is I would actually stand here with your ember because you have the rune, and I would actually drag this creep wave more to here, right? Even pop my flame guard with this creeps and try to kill this and then steal this rune at five minutes. Yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like, amazing, I I right? Of that. Yeah. That that sounds amazing because you would have got so much XP killing a small camp and this creep wave and stealing the rune from the opponent. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. Radiance so you go back here. Uh you hit it. 
So if you use Arcane Rune, like, you want to try to spam your spells as much as you can, okay? Like, you have to think about, like, how to best utilize your rune, right? Like, if you use your Flame Guard, shove the lane out, or, like, drag the waves from here into the camps, like, farm two camps at the same, like, the camp and the wave at the same time. Do something, like, to utilize your Arcane. Because um, you want to, like, maximize how much XP and gold that you're getting at this stage in the game. So you get a rune again, I mean, a ward, you ward top. You will slight this guy, I mean, sorry, change this guy, try to get the rune, it's not there. Okay, so when you're playing Ember, uh, one big thing about Ember is that he can actually check two runes at the same time, right? So you can throw a remnant out here, and then you can go bottom rune. And then wherever the rune is, you go there, right? Because if there's a remnant top and you go here, you're like, hey, there's a rune here, you pick it up, okay, then you go back mid. Uh, if the rune is top, then you can use your remnant, go back here, and take the rune. Because right now what happens is if the ogre was like anywhere near here, he's just going to steal your rune from you. Yeah, I see. So that feels terrible, right? Yeah. Because um, again, bottle is everything. Runes are everything. So you want to keep on getting those runes. All right. There, there's something I need to mention. Uh, you, you probably want to remember this or write this down as well. So after the five minutes, you get the rune here. Like it's extremely important that you shove the mid lane and try to kill this catapult before the six minute rune spawns. After okay. five minutes, so when the catapults spawn, yeah, I want so you to shove, shove mid and try to get kill the enemy catapult before you roll, okay? Because this catapult is the only way that your mid tower ever dies or takes too much damage. I see. So okay. I, do I also kill the catapult or just kill the creeps so that they push into the catapult? Either one is fine. You need to push the creeps, and then if you can kill the catapult yourself, that's good. If you can't kill the catapult yourself and your creeps are gonna kill it, that's fine too. Either way, whatever whatever it is, you need to make sure the mid lane gets pushed out after five minutes. I understand that quite uh, a bit, like how you explained it. But like example in this part, I think I started going bottom because I saw the storm start walking. So do I still try to shove in the wave first? Okay, so let's see let's see here what happens, right? You go here, you do this, you go back middle, right? Like in these situations, what I would do, especially because it's a five minute catapult, I would click flame guard and push the lane right away. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, I need this creep wave to go into his tower. I need my catapult to pressure his tower, not his catapult to pressure my tower. Okay, so these are like mid pressure points, right? So um, in professional Dota or like high competitive Dota, sometimes what happens is five minute catapult comes, you're mid laner already refilled his bottle because he ate a bounty rune or something and one of the position fours or maybe both of the supports would actually come mid help you kill the catapult and pressure the enemy tower with this catapult and this will naturally make the enemy supports have to tp middle and if they tp middle then you have a choice to like dive them and kill them i see you because you're stronger than they are <clears throat> okay and you have a catapult also hitting his, their tower mid so it's kind of like the first move I'm making. We, our team is making. Yeah, it's, well. a, it, it's a potential first move your team can make. They can't always do it because sometimes your team needs to uh, get more XP in the lanes, right? Because it's only five minutes in the game. Yeah. So in this game, it's kind of unfortunate for you because his catapult like started attacking from the high gun. Normally what happens is, um, is the lanes get reset. The catapult is here, the catapult is here. So if you shove the lane, then you can just like right click their catapult from this low ground here, right? And it'll die, then the catapult will go into a tower and then you can like kind of play around this area and like see if you can, you know, either pressure the mid laner or you go and get the six minute room. And then like you can try to roam to one of the other lanes with the rune. I see. Okay, so just make sure after five, like once a boundary spawn, five minute, you make sure the mid lane gets pushed out, okay? Okay. Because yeah, that's how that's the, that. yeah that's that's the only way that you can ever lose your tower or your tower takes too much damage. Okay, so let's keep going. So six minutes here. Um, you go bottom, no rune, and then uh, ideally you have a remnant top and you're checking bottom rune with your hero. Uh, if you're going top rune with your hero, then put a remnant bottom first, and you should do that like at, even at like five fifty. You know, so you're already preparing for that. Um, secondly, if you do find a rune here. And ideally, you've already pushed mid out. You can take this rune and you can walk top. And you can go on these guys. Because you can see the off laners, they're always trying to shove the lane. And they're always out of position, right? So if you're an ember and you walk through the lane like this, 
or sorry, you walk through the river like this with your power rune. You can definitely get one, maybe even two kills. Oh. And then, after you get those kills, you can TP back middle. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Or, if there's no kills to be made top, because let's say your lane is, uh, what, do, what do you call it, your carry pushed the lane and the wave is here, then you can just go back mid, farm, and hold your TP and wait for your opponent to like make an aggressive move and you counter and you counter their aggressive move by TPing. Okay? Yeah. So if let's say bottom, like these two guys, they start to get really aggressive on your Sangye and Neymar and they're up here and you're sitting middle and you have like something bottled up or you have full resources, you can like TP into the fog here and you can use remnants to like init like go into the fight and like try to turn the fight. Because what you got to understand is as a mid laner, you're always going to be the highest leveled hero on the map. Because your side laners are playing 2-1-2, two -two, right? So they're sharing XP no matter what. So you need to always consider that and think that uh, whenever you're, the side lanes are having a fight, if you can get into that fight, you're always going to be that... Um, you're going to be the one who's going to turn the tides, right? Because you're going to be the strongest hero. You're going to be higher level. You're going to have stronger spells. And then you can just like destroy your opponents because they're much lower level and that's how you like snowball a game yeah i see makes okay. a lot of sense right so here you do end up getting the illusion you push on middle moving on here let's see what happens and you kind of just keep fighting with this like storm one-on-one -on -one. you tp base you refill you come back mid you run at him a little bit under attack. No, 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 no. Uh, also with the rune that you mentioned, so the 6 minute rune, yeah. either going top or bottom, so that's also when I usually try to make my first uh, Yes, move, first move, right? yes. At 6 minutes, with your rune, you can try to think about where you can make the, your first move. I see, but let's say, what, what if I lose the rune, like example Storm gets the rune. Right, right, right. Um, do I still sometimes try to make a move? Or is it would be would it be better to just go back mid and you know like tell my teammates play a bit more passively because Storm has the room. So six minutes, he gets the rune. You tell your team, hey guys, Storm has a rune. He might gank. Then you go back mid. You shove the lane. So you gotta understand there's thirty seconds before the next lane comes, right? Or sorry, the next wave comes. So you can drop a remnant here. Then you walk back home instead of using your TP, and then you can remnant back to the mid lane. While you still have a TP available for you to be able yeah. to like counter one of the ganks on the side lanes. Okay, yeah, I'll try that. Okay, if you really feel like you need to be fast and the next wave is coming quicker, then sure, use your TP, go back to base, heal up, go back mid. Just make sure you have four resources and full bottle available so that you can like actually roam and still make a play somewhere. As long as you have full bottle, like, or full resources, like, full HP, full mana, you can still make, like, good rotations to the silence, even if you don't have a root. Oh, okay, that's great to hear. Like, that's what I wasn't so sure about. Right. No, it, it's still possible. Like, I would say, as long as you do the right thing, like, you will probably get the rune maybe 75% of the games. Okay. I see. And you can even, that's where you can help, you can tell, like, your support sanking or support enema to help you get the runes for you, you know? Okay, yeah. The sanking was the support in this game. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll try that next time, like asking, yeah, one of the, the offlane support, right, to camp. Right. Just ask them to come and you, they'll help you, like, get the rune. Because what, what, what could happen is, um, let's say the storm is going for the top rune, then you can, like, Put a remnant bottom. You can put a remnant bottom, then go to the top rune, and you can be fighting the storm for the rune, right? Yeah. And then you can like remnant bottom and get the other rune when if the rune actually spawns bottom. Yeah. Same. Anyway, moving on. Okay. So this is a problem for me. Okay. So let's go back here. You have like full resources. The rune's about to spawn, and you're not already trying to get to the rune faster than your opponent. Okay. Because you're too focused on the creeps at this point. You see that? It's 750. Yeah. You should already be in the river, like, angling for the runes already. This is your most important thing. Again, runes first, and then creeps. Okay? So, remember that. 
and you should always remember that so you need to as early as you can like angle yourself for the runes if the storm gives up going for the rune then you can get it like right now the storm actually has no resource he has no mana you could probably even kill him like if you use, if you like remnant in and you pop flame guard like this guy is gonna either run back to the base or try to fight you and die right if he runs back perfect now you can just go get the runes i th i think i have to start learning to click my opponents more as well yeah definitely definitely you have to do it and you have to think like how you can like use your spells to kick them out of the lane so you can get what you want so here what happens yeah. is you check bottom storm's like oh he's going bottom or and then he's like okay never mind i'm gonna go top instead and then like you're already screwed you know because you're too slow you should have already dropped this remnant here like even 745 and then you should already be in the river ready to go for the top route like ideally by eight minutes you're already on top of this rune get clicking it and trying to get it before them like the storm should never have this double damage 100 percent storm force double damage so then you go back into a jungle you just farm up like imagine you actually got this dd you go mid you push a lane and then like you tp bottom or something and you like use your remnant to go in these guys are all dead right you have yeah. a Sanking, you have an Enigma, you have Malifies, you have Bro Strike. Like, you have so many ways that you can actually kill these guys. And you have double damage. So you're, you're clicking for like 150 plus damage. So, like, you think about like all the pressure that you're losing because in your mind you're not actually prioritizing the runes as much as you could be. Yeah. And, uh, and now the Storm's higher level than me. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, I put that in the notes, like, make sure number one is always just to prioritize the rune now. Yeah, exactly. And the runes could be also the reason why you would even, like, actually win, like, lanes or kill your opponents, like the mid laner and stuff. Because, like, as of right now, it's 9.30 in the game and you've done nothing but sit mid and just, like, farm against a storm. Yeah. Right? But I see if you played this accordingly and you apply all the stuff you just learned you probably would have four kills in this game by now or you would have you would have like you know created four kills in this game already yeah makes a lot of sense that i, I think that's uh great to learn because that's what i thought i was lacking like I, w I wasn't really sure when to make moves or how to make moves and it makes sense that controlling the runes helps me be able to make those moves definitely yeah so thank you thank you so much for that clarifies a lot no problem the early game yeah how to approach it right because mid is all about like literally the first 10 minutes of the game right and like what you do in it in in, in this game you're kind of just playing 1v1 but all these things i talked about these are the things that make a mid laner and what you can do with that okay yeah. there's a lot of other advanced things for example like five six minutes in you can like check the rune then you could have like two wards in your inventory instead of one and you can use that six minute rune to like roll, roam top and plant a ward even in this jungle here so later in the game whenever there's some low hp hero jungling here you can go and kill them like that's like some super advanced level stuff you know like i don't want you to think about that but i'm just like sh telling you like how you can evolve on the stuff that i've already told you as well and maybe that's like something for the future you know i see yeah Right. Thank you so much. But this stuff, like right now, these are the things I want you to focus on and I want you to develop first. Because as soon as you do this, like, as long as, as soon as you fix, like, your first 10 minutes, the games are going to feel a lot more natural. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. So let's watch, like, a little bit more of this game, see what happens, like, when you make your first rotation and what you do with your first rotation. So here, there was a shaman bottom, so you went in, you helped them. Okay, that's fine. So this is the 10 minutes catapult you go base first you heal up you go back mid you farm this camp you go back mid again you farm some more yeah you tp top there's a fight but you see like by 30 minutes right 12 minutes you've already lost yeah. all your advantage of your early game where um you're, like your opponents are going to be getting a lot of levels by then right like yeah. this arcorn is already level 10 <clears throat> so instead of you kind of punishing him when you're level 8 and he's only like level 5 level 6 or whatever 
you're now you're like you let him get to the point where he's like level 10 and you're just like level 11 and you can't really do anything like that much and, anymore and the supports have their ulties right mm-hmm, exactly and they're strong too now <clears throat> so the thing as a mid laner is this early like pre-level 10 you're like the god on the map okay so you keep focusing on getting these runes and you keep focusing on like seeing the angles to attack the side lane and when I say attack the side lane, I don't only mean like you have to like dive them and kill them. You could also wait for the chance where they try to make an aggressive move and you can TP in and counter that aggressive move. You can turn the fights around. You can literally turn the fights around three versus one. As yeah. long as they're like diving into you. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay. Um, while we're here, could I ask, like, uh, as a team, when yeah. is it usually good to, you know, like, push a tower? Like, I hear always that we should go to the off lane. I should go with the off laner and start pushing. Yeah, sure. Mod from part. Right, 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 right. Um, so there's two situations, right? Um, one is you can have six minute rune bottom, and then you roam bottom. As long as you already kill the mid catapult. Now, now listen, at, at five minutes, like, it's important that the mid catapult dies, okay? Or at least, like, your creeps are almost killing the mid catapult. Or else your mid tower might lose too much HP or get killed off. Um, at six minutes, let's say you get bottom rune. It's an Nimbus, right? And then you go bottom. And then you kill your opponent, okay? And then your, your catapult bottom is still alive. You can use that catapult to pressure the bottom tower and do a lot of damage to it. While you stick around the bottom area. Okay? And that will already naturally either kill the tower or it's going to bring the tower really low. Most of the time what happens is when the bottom tower dies, it's like around 10 minutes. When the 10 minute catapult comes, you or like the carry needs to rotate bottom and with the catapult, take this bottom tower. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Okay, that's what happens like 90% of the games. In more complex games, what could happen is everybody tries to like maybe make smokes and try to attack the mid lane kill the catapult mid and try to like dive or like surround the mid tower and try to take the mid tower. Like wherever there's catapults, you, you should try to like play with those catapults and like take towers with that, take objectives with that. So that's every five minutes. So five minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. Play around the catapults. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I do that rotation, like you mentioned, staying bottom with the catapult, right? Do I ask a support to take over mid? You don't need to. You can always TP back mid when there's too many creeps coming into your tower. You shouldn't ruin your own game to pressure the bottom tower at five minutes. That's too early, you know? Okay, but so you it's can, more of like... Yeah. yeah. You just stick around and you see what happens. And then if the too many creeps are going into your tower middle or are they're about to, then you TP back mid and start getting your farm again. Okay, thank you. And you keep doing that, and you keep doing those rotations every two minutes, right? And if you keep doing that, you're gonna build a big advantage for your team. Yeah, so it makes sense why, why the runes are so important now. Okay, there we yeah, go. Thanks. And and also those runes are what refills your bottle and gives you HP and mana, right? Yeah. Or else you can't actually make so many rotations in the game. It's very hard. On top of whatever we talked about, like, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Okay? Don't be afraid to, like, dive someplace and you're not sure if you should dive or something. Like, try it. Try it and see what happens, you know? See the results. And, like, try to man up. Try to, like, utilize your skills more. Like, try to push your limits a bit more as well. Yeah. Right? Like, see, because if you don't push your limits, you're never going to know, like, what you're capable of doing. Yeah, I have to try that a lot more. Yeah. Like even the storm, for example, like when you saw like he has no mana there, like I would have loved it when he when he had no mana mid that you just like remnant in and like try to like click all your spells before the rune spawns and like try to kick his ass. Right? Who knows? Maybe he's stupid. He tries to fight man fight you and then he'll just die. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then okay. you could also consider like utilizing your teammates. One thing about Ember, what's really good is like because he's such a good killer and he does so much damage. Like, think about your allies. If they, if you, if you have allies who have stuns, you roaming to your allies who have stuns is amazing, because they're gonna set up for you and you're gonna be able to just sit there and right click those heroes and do all this damage that your hero is capable of doing. 
right? Like this game, there's a Sankey on your team. I would, if I have a Sankey on my team, I feel amazing all the time because I just be like, okay, let me go check bottom rune. There's a rune. Oh, great. There's a rune. Let me go bottom. My Sankey has a stun. He stuns this Shadow Shaman. Boom. Free kills all the time. He stuns yeah. his Arc Warden. Boom. Free kills all the time again. Right? Like, oh, think about those things. And then this game, you also have an apparition. So what you can do with apparition is you have high levels of searing chains. You and apparition can smoke together. You go in, you chain someone. Apparition drops ulti on them. They're gonna die every time, right? Yeah. So in the in these games, after laning stage especially, like you need to think like where can you play, who you can play with to secure kills while still like you know farming and stuff like that. Okay, I would love to like go into more okay. details about mid game and late game, but we talked so much about the early game, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Exactly. Yeah, I we, think I have before, to fix that first. Yeah, before we, before we keep the other stuff. More. Let me know how that goes for you and how you feel. Um, and if you have more Thank questions. Thank you so much. Like, I think you were yeah. able to clarify a lot of things I was confused about, like I, what I wasn't sure about. And at least Definitely. now I have a game plan on what to do. That's good. Like early to mid game yeah. and once i clean that up i could get another session to see like if i improved and then move on to the mid game late game exactly most definitely okay yeah We're thank you thank out. you again so much like, no problem Lloyd. <laughs> to be honest i learned a lot from your videos already so i was just hoping to get a personal session as well yeah we're gonna have more videos so you're gonna have a lot of content to look at and uh, <laughs> i'm glad you're able to get a coaching session and hopefully we're going to have another one soon. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you so much again for this session. All right. Have a nice day, man. Oh.